In the name of Allah, may peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah and his family and followers to proceed. The 14th hadith on the authority of Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an. May Allah be pleased with him who said, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, It's not permissible to spill the blood of a Muslim who bears witness that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except for Allah and that I am the Messenger of Allah except for one in three instances. The married person who commits adultery, a life for a life, and whoever forsakes their deen and goes against the community of the Muslims, reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So in this hadith, the, the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, he explained that the blood of a Muslim is, uh, is respected and it has sanctimony, it's, it's sacred. And this blood, it's not halal or it isn't to be spilled except for one in three cases. The adulterer who, or the married person who commits adultery. And this is because this is, they've done this after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed blessings upon them that they have married. And for this reason, they have gone against this blessing and the greatness of their sin reflects the punishment that they'll receive. The second, a life for a life, and this is what is called in Al-Islam Al-Qisas, or the punishments. And this is due to the statement of Allah, O you who believe, Al-Qisas, or punishments, have been written upon you in the instances of killing. The third, the one who leaves for, or, or forsakes their religion and splits or goes against the community. And the Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin, may Allah have mercy upon him said that the intent behind this is the person who's who who revolts against the imam the leader of the muslims um it's it's permissible to fight them uh to the extent of killing them until they um return and repent to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from this stance and there are other things that make the blood of a Muslim permissible that are mentioned in other ahadith. But as we have said, we understand that ahadith um, as a collective um, and they fill gaps, etc. So from the benefits of this hadith is that the underlying principle is the respect and dignity that a Muslim has and that their blood is to be protected and their blood is, has some sanctimony. Um, and a second benefit of this hadith is that in these three instances, it is permissible um, for the imam um, to shed the blood of a Muslim. And that's an important point. It isn't just for anyone to go and do this. There are rulings that um, each of these things, the one um, who commits adultery, the one who takes a life, the one who leaves the religion and goes against the jama'ah, the congregation, there are rulings applicable to each of these, and those rulings are looked at in the books of jurisprudence, the books of fiqh, um, and this isn't the place to study those. Um, from the benefits of the hadith also is that there is punishment in Islam, and it's a type of cat capital punishment, and this is done, as I said, um, not just by anyone, and it's not just done... Um, without fulfilling certain requirements and without removing certain obstacles rather the requirements that are needed have to be fulfilled and the obstacles that prevent the ruling from taking place need to be removed and Allah knows best and may peace and blessings be upon his prophet and upon his family and followers until the day of resurrection